This video will be focusing on logarithms, more specifically how to write exponents to logarithms and logarithms to exponents, as well as a few rules and common logarithms. If you haven't done so already, I'd like you to pause the video and attempt the warm-up. If you have already attempted it, uh, we have asked you to solve 2 to what power gives you 8. You're not used to solving using inverse relations yet. Uh, you are going to see that when we start solving logarithms and exponents. But for now, the way I was hoping you would think is I'm asking 2 to what power gives me 8. Well, 8 is equivalent to 2 cubed. So x equals 3. We can write exponential functions or equations as logarithmic equations and vice versa, so logarithmic to exponential. There's different ways that um, teachers can teach this. I do what I call the circle trick. It just tells me the order to write it. So let's say I start with an exponential equation. I start at my base, draw an arrow to the solution, and start at the solution, drawing an arrow to the exponent. So this tells me what order I'm going to write it in the logarithm. It's log base b of a equals x. b came first, then a, then x, which I see here. And if you started with the logarithm, just go in order, creating a circle. Start at the base, always start at the base. So b to the power of x gives me a. b to the power of x gives me a. Let's try it again. Let's say I want to start with 2 to the 6th power equals 64. 2 to 64 to 6. So that's how I'm going to draw my circle. That tells me the order that I'm going to plug it in to my logarithm. So it's log base b, the base was 2, of a, which was 64, gives me x, the exponent, 6. Now let's try going from the logarithm to the exponent. 4 to the power of 1 will give me 4. 4 to the power of 1 will give me 4. Let's do it again. 5 to the 0 power will give me 1. 5 to the 0 power will give me 1. I'm going to star these and label them A and B because we're going to come back to those later. Next, I'm just going to keep doing the pattern, okay? I'm going to go a little bit faster. Drawing my arrows, I can see that this becomes log base B, which was 5, of A, which is 1 25th, will equal negative 2. Drawing my circle once again, I see I have log base B, which was 3 of A, which was 81, equals X. Going from a logarithm to an exponent, doing the circle trick, starting at the base, going to X and then A, I get 10 squared equals 100. Circle trick once again shows me how to write it. Log base B of 7, A is 49, the exponent was 2. Once again, I have log base 5 of 5 equals 1, and then circle trick once again, 12 to 0 power equals 1. Starring my last two. Oops, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see that. If you need to pause the video and write that, um, go ahead and do so. But I'm going to star the last two and label them C and D. So I have A, B, C, and D. If you're taking a look at those, 
Um, I want to point out that these are special rules. So essentially what it's saying is um, whenever you have your base match what we're taking the logarithm of, it will always equal 1. So we could see log base 4 of 4 is 1. Log base 5 of 5 is 1. So that's this rule right here. I want you to put A and C. So again, that was log base 4 of 4 is 1. Log base 5 of 5 is 1. We also have a rule that says whenever we take the logarithm, and that's any logarithm, so any base, of 1 will always get 0. We can see that here. Log base 5 of 1 was 0. But that was also true for log base 12 of 1, giving me 0. And the reason why we can see is because of the exponents. It's because it's always being raised to the 0 power, and anything to the 0 power is 1. So, for this one, I want you to put B and D. Next, just some more vocab. I want you to circle this, star it, or highlight it. Um, it's just saying that we have something called a logarithm, a common logarithm. Um, and a common logarithm is a log with a base 10. So if I ever see something that just says log of a number, it doesn't specifically declare what the base is, it's understood to be 10. So once again, the common logarithm looks something like this. It's where they just put log of some number. Even though they didn't specify what that base is, it is understood to be 10. I also want you to write in there's something called the natural logarithm. You're going to see this uh, in a later video. The natural logarithm is denoted as ln. Okay, so the natural logarithm is ln of, let's say, 5, keeping with the theme of the other example. The natural logarithm is a log with base e. So the natural log of 5 is actually equivalent to log base e of 5. Again, we'll see that in another video later on in this unit. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate logarithms now. I'm going to be using the circle trick, and what you'll notice for A through I is none of these are equations. So we're going to have to write it in um, equals some number. That's the number we're trying to find, okay? So log base 2 of 16 equals x. Doing the circle trick, if I want to rewrite it from a log to an exponent, that's saying 2 to what power will give me 16. So again, 2 to what power would give me 16? Well, 2 to the first power is just 2. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 8. 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 4 times 4, which is 16. That's what I wanted. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x equals 16 was equivalent to 2 to the 4th power. Once we have the same base here, we can look at the exponents. So I know that x equals 4. Let's try it again. Part B. Again, I need to make this an equation. So, using the circle trick, 3 to what power would give me 81? So, 3 to what power would give me 81? Well, ask yourself, 3 to the first power is 3. No, that doesn't work. 
What about uh, 3 squared? No, that's 9. 3 cubed? No, that's 27. What about 3 to the 4th power? Yes, that would be 81. So 3x equals 3 to the 4th power. Now that I have the same base, I can just look at the exponents, and I have x equals 4. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to, uh, let's do f. I want to talk about that one real, real quick. This is what I was talking about at the top of the page. Notice how a specific base is not given here. It is understood to be the common logarithm then, so it's really log base 10 of 1000. So when I'm trying to solve this equation, I'm going to set it equal to x. What you need to ask yourself is 10 to what power will give you 1000? So 10 to what power would give me 1000? The answer to that is 10 cubed, so x equals 3. Why don't we take a look at um, let's look at D. I know I'm jumping around a little bit. The rest are going to end up being try problems, but I'm trying to pick the harder ones. So I'm going to write it as equal to X. What we're asking ourselves using the circle trick is one half to what power would give me 256. So one half to what power would give me 256. You need to ask yourself, what's happening here? Notice how we're starting off with a fraction where our number is in the denominator. But now, we're looking at a whole number where the number we care about is in the numerator and technically this is over one. So what type of exponent can cause this to happen? The answer to that is a negative exponent. If something is negative, we can move it from the denominator to the numerator and vice versa. So now we need to ask ourselves, two to what power would give me 256? And the answer to that is two to the eighth power. So really, one half to the negative eight power would give me a positive 256. So x equals negative eight. I'll do another problem like this with you because I think that's kind of the hardest one. Let's take a look at h. Once again, we have what's a common logarithm. I know that because there's no specified base. So log base 10 of 0 0.0001. Whenever I get decimals here, I don't like that because that doesn't really help me. What I would do is I would rewrite the decimal as a fraction. So let's look at what place it is in. I'll put one in, as my placeholder in the numerator over, here's the tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So this is one and ten thousandth equals x. Using the circle trick, I need to ask myself, 10 to what power gives me 1 over 10,000? See how rewriting the decimal is going to help me when trying to determine the exponent? What would cause a whole number to turn into a fraction? Well, a negative exponent would do that. So I know it's going to be 10 to some negative power. 10 to what power would give me 10,000? The answer to that is a 4. So x equals negative 4. I would like you to pause the video and try the other problems. Hit play to check your answers. Pause the video and check E and G. Pause the video and check C and I.